Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about allocating memory in C++. And just for all of you Java programmers out there that came from a Java background, I, I put in this slide. So uh, C++ has pointers and Java has what's called references. So a reference is when you create something in Java using that new operator like uh, array list, list equals new array list, that is a reference. Um, C++ has instances and pointers. So pointers store memory locations and references reference the information where the memory location was stored, which is kind of weird. It doesn't actually store a memory location. Pointers have to be deleted and references don't. Pointers are specified with a star and, and in Java just everything's a reference. I mean that's just how Java works. All right. So this is kind of the, the difference between Java and C++. So in C++ you can allocate memory using the new operator as well just like you did in Java but you do that using a pointer. So here I have a character away, a pointer to a character, a double, um, now the nice thing about this is you don't have to define something right away. So for example when we did the array previous to now um, we had a fixed size array and it couldn't change. With the use of a pointer we could allocate memory as we need. So suppose we need our array to be 10 and then change to 20 later on. We can do that using a pointer which we can't just do using a, a primitive type array. Now what that does is that stores information in two different places. There's the stack and there's the heap. We've been using the stack in memory to store and you don't ever see it it's just stored there so anytime you say int num it's stored on the stack anytime you say double whatever you want to call it it's stored on the stack anytime you allocate memory using the new operator it's stored on the heap and the difference is the way it's stored a stack is this what is it FIFO and LIFO last in first out so as you allocate things on the stack as soon as they're done they automatically get deleted versus the heap you have to you can allocate as you need so it doesn't necessarily have to be um, it doesn't have to know the exact size when you uh, until you use that new operator the problem is is since it's stored on a heap you actually have to deallocate that memory so the whole point to this slide is, well, know that there's different ways of storing memory, but know that if you ever use the new operator, you have to use the delete operator to deallocate that memory again. So let's show you. So if I have a new to allocate C, I have to use a delete to allocate C. Delete scores, delete P, you do have to use this delete operator to de deallocate that memory. Okay, so you can also use pointers to point to structs in classes. So let's kind of show you this. So remember our structs were kind of like mini classes with everything's public? Love structs, they're super easy to use. So here's a struct for time and I've got hours, minutes, and seconds. I can instantiate a pointer to that struct by saying time star t equals new time. And what that means is it's going to allocate this memory. Now before, this is, this is the weird funky notation. I'm going to show you a better notation. Since it's a pointer and I want to deallocate, to dereference the information to put the value in, you can do this particular notation which is star and then put the parentheses around your pointer. And then we can use the dot operator to specify the hours, the minutes, or seconds. Now this way it's it's possible it looks clunky in my opinion. I'm going to show you a better way. So you can also use what's called the arrow operator and it's a little cleaner. Know that if since this is a pointer we can't just plain old use the dot operator because t is a pointer not a variable. Before we were using variables so we'd say t dot hours equals 11. We can't do that if we're using a pointer. Instead we do it, this is a minus and then a greater than. 
So anytime you're using pointers, if you want to reference the information inside of your struct, you use the arrow operator. Pointers and arrays. Okay, arrays are automatically pointers. The difference is, um, I think I show on the next slide. Yeah, so here's, here's the example. So here's a array. This is what we did last chapter, and I'm iterating through my array and doing a C out statement. Now here is a pointer. It's the same thing. It's an array. I was trying to trick you. Wait, I want to go back there. I want to show you. Now you can use this dereferencing operator on an array, because an array is automatically a pointer, and I'm just going to say primes plus i to access the next location in memory and I've used this dereferencing operator so these two examples do the exact same thing. This is my preferred notation but I wanted to show you that you can do it using pointer notation because arrays are inherently already pointers. Now because of that there is a little bit of a difference. Um, array pointers are constant pointers are not constant and array pointers are constant. So here's the example. So I've got my primes variable. If I were to, let's go on this side first. Here's my primes, it's 2, 3, 5, and 7. Then I have a pointer that is referencing primes. I come in here and I could do a C out statement for I pointer plus plus which all that means is it's going to go through and print out this and this and this and this. It's just a confusing way of doing it. But they're not constant. I could do an I pointer plus plus just to move my pointer to the next position in memory. However, array pointers are constant. So this is the same exact example but instead of a using pointer I'm using my primes and so this example over here is actually not valid because array pointers are constant whereas pointers are not constant. Okay now the coolest thing, one of the cool things about pointers is you can set the size of your list. I think this is what I was telling you about earlier but now I have an example of it so here we go. I've got a pointer and I'm setting it equal to null pointer that just means nothing. I'm not setting it equal to anywhere it's not pointing to any memory location. Then I have this variable called L size. C out statement, hey, please enter the size of your list, and we do a C in statement for whatever size they choose. At this point, I can allocate memory using the new operator to size my list to be that size. Then I can use my list however I want. Once I'm done, I do have to go back and delete using the, the delete operator though. So that's the nice thing about pointer lists is you can change the size and we well, can't change the size once you've done it once. You do, well you can but you just have to big process to copy things into another array and then copy it back. We're not going to go into that right now. Uh, but you can specify the size at runtime instead of at compile time. Now there's two ways to represent null or no value. Uh, null pointer is a newer way, null is an old way, but both of them work. So you might see null in all caps and you might see null pointer in lowercase. The difference is null works for um, ints and doubles and stuff like that. Null pointer only works for pointers. So if I say int i equals null pointer, this would give me an error. But if I say int i equals null, this is okay. It's an older style. It actually just means null like this just means zero, whereas null pointer means that a pointer is not pointing anywhere. All right, catch us in the next video and we'll do a little program that uses pointers.